Well, it's good to be with you today, and um, I'm excited to uh, continue or begin this series really about the Christian disciplines. And I know you're all eager <laughs> to learn how to be disciplined as a Christian. And, uh, and last week we kind of did an introduction talking about why the disciplines, what the, why it's necessary, and we really uh, focused on the grace of God because so often what we can do is get caught in the disciplines and think somehow we're earning God's blessing or earning God's favor when in fact that's a gift. And so the disciplines are literally, and there's a number of them between 12, 15, depending, 18, depending on... Um, I guess maybe your tradition, but uh, these disciplines are not something for us to, in, uh, to twist God's arm or to get him to favor us or bless us, but the gifts are really uh, designed to do what? Empower the church. Personally, they're, they're designed really for us to be able to present ourselves before the Lord and say, here I am change me transform me and so uh, I mean you can you can be a, a, a somebody who the discipline of study uh, you could be somebody who like the Pharisees of the Old Testament we we understand from history that they would memorize the first five books the whole Pentateuch they had it memorized well did that help them I mean the, the word himself came right there and they missed him. They had all of that word memorized, and yet they missed him when he came. So it's not a matter of us studying the Bible so we can win our arguments. It's a matter of studying the Bible so it can transform us from the inside out. Okay, let's pray. Father, <laughs> as we, we come today, Lord, and present ourselves before you that you might accomplish all that you want to do in us, and then ultimately, Lord, through us. And, Lord, we say thank you for loving us enough to change us, to not allow us to stay like we are. And so we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, again, the, the gifts or the, 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 the disciplines are to present us so we, can, or so we can present ourselves before the Lord so he can transform us inside out. Now, as I promised last week, we're going to begin with the discipline of fasting. And uh, we're going to use two texts. Uh, one is the Celebration of Di Discipline by Richard Foster, which is really a classic of book now. So it's a great book. And then also um, the appendix in my book, The Challenge. And so uh, I'd like to begin by reading a little bit in my book. Uh, and I, I coupled each of these um, disciplines with one of the chapters in my book. And so as we, as we begin to understand these disciplines, it, it will really greatly help us. So uh, it begins, to, to, to modern ways of thinking, fasting often seems to be a practice that monks, mystics, and New Age vegans observe. <laughs> if fasting has any relevance to our lives, it might be to lose a couple of pounds for this coming weekend's special occasion. And it's at these special occasions we typically eat far too much rich food. <laughs> anyway, go figure. <laughs> and if there is a good reason, how can pushing away from the dinner table empower my prayer life? If the spiritual life is of grace and not of works, then how can skipping a few meals really make any difference? Many contend that fasting is no longer necessary for the Christian life. However, it's clear that the lack of fasting in the life of the Christian today is a major reason the church's lack of spiritual and moral power. So remember Jesus then... Uh, his disciples were trying to cast the devil out, and, and they said, Lord, we couldn't do it. And, and what was Jesus' response? Describe only himself with prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. Um, you know, I think of, uh, you, you're all, except Bob over here, all too young to, to remember this. <laughs> no, Bob's too young as well. But I remember the reruns of the Dobie Gillis show. Yeah. And the Dobie Gillis <laughs> show was about this, it was a guy who played... Was it Bob Denver, the guy yeah. who played yeah. Gilligan? You know, yeah, so he was, like the beatnik. he was the beatnik. Yeah, he was named 
Maynard G. Krebs. Thank That's you right. so much. Okay. And, 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 and so he was a beatnik. And of course, beatniks, for the young folks here, the beatniks were pre-hippies. Okay? And so that's what they were, you know, and, uh, and they wore goatees. But at any rate, uh, so Maynard G. Krebs would, uh, so, something would come up about work, and he'd go, work! You know, <laughs> like, like that. And so Christians do this, fasting! Yeah, fasting. And, um, you know, I mentioned last week, Derek Prince talked about fasting uh, consistently one day every week. And then he was talking one time, and he said, you know, as I was adding that up, and this was like at 50 years of ministry, he said, that's over seven years of fasting. Wow, just think about that. Now, now let's swing to the other side. That was one day of fasting every week. Now, Kenneth Hagin on the other side, in his book about fasting, he talks about, you know, you probably, and, and, and I really appreciate his balance here. He said, not that Derek was out, because he was talking about one day a week, but, but Kenneth Hagin was talking about people who extreme extreme fasting and all that sort of thing. He said, you know, he'd never had to fast more than three days at a time. Mm -hmm. and, and that was, he said, you know, the whole point of fasting is to hear from the Lord. All right. So now let's, 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 let's go to the, to the Bible just real quick and go to Isaiah chapter 58. And while you're turning there, I want to ask a question of you. And, and, and if any of you fasted this last week or you fasted recently, uh, what kind of victories did you have or what kind of failures did you have? And they're both valuable. <laughs> they're both valuable. Anybody want to share their uh, maybe experience this last couple weeks or this last week specifically? I won't ask how many fasted this last week at all, but... Um, any thought? Yeah. I was trying to last week with trying to go a whole day. Yeah. Because of our lifestyle, that's just, I hit the walls. Yeah. And so I do shorter ones, and the sure. longest I've done has gone until 1 o'clock. Okay. <clears throat> we had a late lunch meeting, and so my mini breakthrough was that I went as long as I could. Awesome. So far. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it just, it, after 11, really, it becomes very spiritual for me. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, very good. So at some point, you're, you're physically starting to feel the effects of it. And so now you have to kind of lean into the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Burn very fast. Okay, you have a high metabolism. Yeah. You, have, you lay hands on everybody. <laughs> Fire up our metabolism. Yeah, yeah I know for, for, for my life, it's been interesting because uh, I've had opportunity to build a couple houses and it kind of came in, in, in various seasons of my life and I could tell my metabolism was changing at each one of those things and it was like whoa what happened what used to happen to me I can't do that anymore and so things are changing I think I'm in one of those periods right now and I'm trying to figure out the adjustment for it so very good that's a great that's a great testimony anybody else want to share a victory or maybe a failure even that's you know Kathy you can Lots of times when I have fasted, I have just gone without food, and I sure. didn't feel there was a whole lot of spiritual. I mean, maybe I still had my usual amount of time with the Lord, but not more than usual. Okay. And so um, yesterday, I really focused on every time that I would have been cooking or eating or doing dishes, I would have spent time with the Lord. Wonderful. And what I found was in the evening, I just suddenly felt like dancing to the Lord. I had this energy out of nowhere. <laughs> Wow. It doesn't usually happen in the evening. I'm usually pretty much out and just want to sit, you know. Wow. And so, um, yeah, praise God. Do you have a verse for that? Uh, no, do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Well, of course I do, yeah. Uh, it's my job. No, no, no. <laughs> Isaiah 40, 31. It's a, it's a classic. Those that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew, renew their, strength. their strength. So you were taking those times and you were renewing, stuff. literally renewing your strength as you were waiting on God rather than... Uh, I'm just not fat. I'm just not eating. You would actually take that time specifically in directed time. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's that's 
I'm hearing a rebuke in my own heart. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I'm not. No, it, it's a, it's a good, it's a good thing to be uh, exhorted by the Lord. Yeah, it, it really is. So, anybody else have a victory or a failure? Even, yeah. Well, this is not exactly like that for the last couple of weeks, but I remember years ago Shirley Dawson okay. talked about she took one day a week to fast for her children and for the children's future spouses because they were young at the time, and so. Life is, yeah, that's right. Life is happening. So that's my yeah. Is to have it feel spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> have to feel spiritual. Well, yeah. you know, what, what about this? Let's, let's apply this whole thing, that whole, what, what Kathy was just saying, to our fasting, or what Aaron was saying, when the weakness, the dizziness would start to come, you have to lean into the Lord a little more. And um, I, I want to apply this to healing. Let's just talk about that for just a moment. You know, whenever that pain comes or that feeling comes and your body, you've been believing the Lord, you're declaring the verses, you're declaring those promises you've hidden in your heart. And um, I remember when I was struggling so much with my knees and uh, I'd hurt them. Uh, I hurt one. My, the, it was interesting. I hurt the first one on my motorcycle. And uh, I, I t started to pull out and I, and, I, and I put my leg down, which I shouldn't have done. And it kind of twisted my knee and it began, you know. So then in the right one then started. It's like, what is this about? Well, that was an attack. But as I was believing God for healing and all that, I, I mean, it was so painful even to walk or to walk upstairs. And every step, that pain I would use to declare the verses of the scripture that I was believing for. So rather than, oh, this hurts, hurts so much. Oh, this hurts. And it did. It, I, I in bed at night, I, it was hard even to my knees to touch it just hurts so much and, and, and when those pains would come like the dizziness or the, or the, the feeling of faintness the leaning into the Lord that's when I would declare the scripture I would the verses that God had given to me and so um, there was a, there was, I was using that as a, an emphasis to believe God okay. all right so awesome awesome so let's go to anybody else want to talk about your experience with fasting maybe not the last week but maybe in, like Shelley was saying some other time. Anybody? Okay. You'll have experiences in the next uh, few few months as we talk about disciplines because fasting will continue to come up over and over and over. Yay! <laughs> 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 yeah. So in Isaiah, this is a classic one for us to know. Now, maybe somebody quickly could go to Psalm 35, 13. This is one of the keys of fasting and, and why we fast that we often don't think about. Uh, somebody could read that before we start in Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 is kind of a textbook for us when it comes to, to fasting. So um, Psalm 35, what did I say? 13. 13, I think that's it. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer would return to my own heart. Wow. So he said that fasting is a way we humble ourselves. Why do you suppose fasting humbles ourselves? There's a number of reasons. It weakens us. Okay, we find out, how, find out how physically weak we are, how needy we are. Okay. We're telling our flesh, no, you don't get everything you want. You're telling your flesh, that's a huge one. Telling your flesh, no, you don't get it that way today. And I mentioned the, 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 what I heard Brother Copeland say years ago, and that was because he saw all I could think about was that donut at the end of the fast. <laughs> and, uh, and like I said the last time we talked about this, I said, that, this guy kind of scares me. He just said, okay, that's it, no more donuts. Period. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's, that, but that, kind of, that kind of determination uh, of humbling ourselves and saying, Flesh, you don't get your way. Amen. Okay. So, as we fast, it is a legitimate way of humbling ourselves. Well, there's a couple other ways to humble ourselves. Uh, you know, remember this. 
you can be humiliated or you can humble yourself. And so uh, we don't want to be humiliated. But how, how are, what are some of the ways? Because I think sometimes we don't understand what humility is. And um, uh, what are some of the, the, the ideas of what is real genuine humility? Okay. I would, well, sometimes you just shut up, but um, not you, just in general, be quiet. <laughs> well, thank you, Kathy, um, but, you or know, Katie, yeah, yeah. okay, in, yeah, yeah. In a marriage, it's not <clears throat> always being about right, who's right, but putting the other okay. above yourself. Putting somebody else before yourself, yes. Okay, anybody else about, so, the, yep, when you know you're right, and you keep your mouth shut. That's humbling yourself, of course. Yes. Yeah. Anybody else? And, and apologizing when you know you're wrong. Or, mm -hmm. you know, letting people know that okay. you're wrong. Okay. Yes, apologizing. Humbling yourself by apologizing. You know, here's what. Go, yes, sir. Allowing God to exalt us instead of trying to exalt ourselves. Okay. And you have a verse for that? I can't give you the reference, but yeah. I'm thinking of one. First Peter 5 6. Okay, look, here you go. First. First Peter <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Cast our cares on oh, cast on people rather than him. Very good. So just where I was going here in this chapter. Yeah. No, very good. No, thank you. No, no, that's exactly right. You know, how, how many times we think we've got to carry it, we've got to bear the burden, we've got, and the Lord says, casting your cares on him. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, casting ourselves on the Lord. So there, there is a humility in saying, God, I can't handle this. Rather than fighting through and determining you can do it by yourself. Yes, sir. Well, I think with Jesus when he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Mm. But he was humbling himself to the hand of the Father and the will of the Father. Now, here's a real basic way that we humble ourselves. And it uh, doesn't so much apply in this circumstance, but uh, we sit at the back chair, not the front chair. Jesus was clear with that one. I'll give you a perfect example. Maybe I've shared this with you before, but it's still so real to me. On the first trip I ever took overseas, we did a whirlwind tour of Eastern Europe, starting in Germany, went through all the Iron Curtain, uh, and then came back to Austria. But when we were in Romania, at Joseph Tan's church, big Baptist church, and uh, we happened to come that day, they were having a wedding. And, um, and I, I know I've shared this with you before, but it was so powerful to me. We came, there were four of us, and there was a big, big banquet. I was surprised that they were having this big meal, and the whole church was involved, and hundreds of people were there. And the main table with the bride and the groom and the parents, when we arrived, the parents of the bride and groom took other seats, and they put us with the bride and the groom. Now that was Jesus talking, that's exactly it. You sit in the back and let them exalt you. See, what, see so that, that was so, I thought, why is this happening? Very humbling, very humbling. Um, so there are ways we humble ourselves by taking the lower position. And uh, that's so important. So now let's, let's go to Isaiah 58. And uh, this is so good. Now, at the beginning, we're not going to read the first f four or five verses. These, he's talking about this kind of a false humility, this uh, a pride arrogance in, in why we fast, much like the Pharisees were doing uh, to, to exalt themselves and to show everybody. And in verse 5, he says, Is this not the fast that I've chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Um, would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? So, man, he's talk, this is right out of what Jesus was saying to the Pharisees. Oh, look at me. I fast. I do all these things. And what did Jesus say? To, how are we supposed to handle that? He said, wash your face, brighten up. You start moping, you know, what's wrong with you, Mark? Oh, I'm fasting today. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with telling someone. I think some people think, well, you shouldn't tell anybody if you're fasting. Well, don't go around boasting about it, but there's nothing wrong with 
And, and let me give you a heads up. Tell your, tell your family, I'm fasting today. Why? So she doesn't make dinner for you. Because you know she's going to make your favorite meal or whatever, but then maybe that's okay. But, um, but the point is, uh, that's a courtesy. Mm -hmm. That's a courtesy. And so I, I've known some people, well, I don't tell anybody. I don't tell. Well, you better tell your wife. So she's then go to all that work, and then you. All right. So. Yeah, all right. So that, so there's that, the scripture about the husband and wife agreeing together to have a fasting time. Well, yes. Together. Husband and wife agreeing together for a fasting time. But what would, what would the Lord? I'm just asking. That there is that. Yes. There is that. There is that where to, together as a family. I'm going to call the church this morning if if we get to it in the announcements. Lord willing, I'm going to call the church to a month of fasting throughout January. That doesn't mean you have to fast every day. That means we're just all going to fast somehow as the Lord leads us this, this month. Matter of fact, one of the things I think I may ask if I get the opportunity this morning is let's, let's fast from some of the prophetic voices we're all hearing. <laughs> Why? Because we need to hear from the Lord ourselves. Does this make sense? Yeah. It makes sense. And so uh, whether it's uh, a morning Aaron was talking about, or a whole day, or a longer day. The Lord will lead you in how you should fast, and I, and I, I like that. I think that's a good thing. Some people, it's like like uh, uh, churches that celebrate Lent, or observe Lent. I guess it's not a celebration. Observe Lent, you know, you give up something for those 40 days. Well, that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, matter of fact, it's a good thing, I think. So, let's go on in verse 6. Is this not the fast I have chosen? So here is some of the reasons we fast. And I'm going to read through this, and you just kind of mark these verses and, and, and see what you can find in here. Here's the reasons. To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. That you might break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you might bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him. and Hide not yourselves from your own flesh. Then your light will break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, what's that mean? Judging. Judging. And speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually, satisfy your mouth with, in, in drought, strengthen your bones, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places and shall raise up the foundations of many generations. I bet the gal you were talking about surely used that verse, praying for the, our, our generations after, you know, that are coming after us. What a great verse for our children. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. I'll just stop right there. Is that rich or what? Wow. This is, this is so dynamic. So he, he gives all these points. Maybe we ought to just look at You can pull out a few as we're talking. What are some of the ways we shouldn't be fasting or reasons we shouldn't be, uh, you know, having a fast? Because you were going to go on a diet anyway, so I decided to call it a fast. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've had people tell me that. Okay. I needed to diet anyway, so I'm going to call it a fast. I'm going to call it a fast. Yeah, okay, well. 
you know, the benefit is, you know, if you, if you, you do fast, it will benefit your diet. Yeah. <laughs> it really will, of course. Yeah. Some, I've known people that always break the fast in the evening instead of the morning, and they gain weight. I mean, okay. Know, so it's not really okay. listening to the diet. Okay. Well, you know, I think of, now I think of John Wesley. I think I mentioned it in my book. But John Wesley, everybody knows who John Wesley is. Uh, John Wesley, uh, of course, uh, he had a whole number of young preachers underneath him. And if you were part of the Methodist movement at that time, Methodist, by the way, means method. They had a method of what they did. And so this sounds like it fits right into his method. And John, so, so early Methodists, if you're going to be a preacher in the early Methodist church, you fasted every Monday and Wednesday until dinner. Yeah. That's just that's what you did. If you were gonna if you were gonna be a man of the cloth, you fasted Mondays and Wednesdays until until dinner time. Yeah. So who knew? All right. So <clears throat> praise the Lord. Well, he says to take away the yoke from your midst. That's in verse nine, halfway through. And the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. Um, back to the whole point of the disciplines is to release the grace of God in us rather than going man I am really God's gift to everybody and I'm such a great faster and you guys are slobs well pointing of the finger telling everybody else how they need to follow my example of fasting <laughs> What do you think? Any ideas about that? Everybody's got to hear from God. Everybody's got to hear from God themselves. That's right. That's right. And you know what? We need to cut each other slack. You know, the fact is, I want, I want everybody to give me grace. And I'm saying me, which, but I mean us. We all want someone to give us grace. I want you to believe the best about me. Don't you want everybody to believe the best about you? Of course you do. Well, then why don't we think the best about everybody else? Isn't it so easy how we can look at other people, point the finger, and not believe the best about them, but we want them to believe the best about us? Oh, man. So let's, 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 re let's release grace to everybody else, realizing What's going on in their life is their story. It's not my story. And that, that, that will just release you from the burden of being somebody else's policeman. Now, if you're a dad or a mom, you obviously have to speak into your children's lives. If you're an employer, you need to speak into your employees' lives. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a place to make a judgment. There's a place to to say we got to fix this but we're talking about just in general here where and even then you don't want to do it with a pointing and condemning uh, uh, finger all right one thing that struck yeah. me is that you know i was talking about feeling spiritual is that the fact is it's a supernatural experience that you're not going to feel okay so just loosing the bonds of wickedness undoing the straps of the yoke that's all something that's happening outside of us okay, there's a supernatural outside of ourselves yes Exactly. So, let's apply it to ourselves, though. You could do some fasting to get deliverance yourself in an area. And maybe you need to, because uh, somebody said earlier, it's about putting the flesh down, saying, flesh, you're not going to rule. You're not going to control me. Whether it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, you're going to say, no, uh, body, you're not going to rule over my life. And I'm desperate to hear from God. I'm desperate to hear from God. And one, one verse talks about my, my necessary food, giving up my necessary food. I think that's old King James. But So there's a, this place of giving it up to say, I'm going to achieve, I'm going to look for something that's greater on a, on a spiritual level. Okay. Yes, sir. I was kind of interested in what you talked about. If you extend your soul to the hungry, you satisfy the afflicted soul. So, you know, while you're denying your own body, wow. there's an opportunity to reach out somebody that's hungry and if you do you know it says you shall be watered you should be like a watered garden and like a spring of water 
And it kind of reminds me of the Dead Sea. Yeah. Mm. There's stuff going in, but there's no outlet. You're right. Dead. Right. So. That's good. That's good. So, I mean, I, I <coughs> there's often, sometimes, you'll hear um, teaching on fasting. Okay, we're going to fast, and then the money that normally you would use for making that meal, why don't you give it to the poor? Why don't you? Yeah. So that's a very that's a very classic way of doing something practically. Um, you know, or you could, I guess, actually fast and serve food to somebody too at the same time. You know, wouldn't tell them what you're doing, but um, I'm fasting so you can eat. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, I mean, isn't that how we are? It, it, it's, oh, my. My, 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 my. Sometimes I just think how ugly the carnal mind is and the carnal carnality in our lives. Anybody else pull out of this something that's speaking maybe to your heart? Yes? What comes to me, and this is kind of on the subject, but the more we pour our grace out, it's like a reservoir. Okay. And so as we pour out grace, then God can refill us. Sure, that's good. As, well, what did Jesus say? He said, freely you've received, freely give. So he gives so we can give, so we can receive more. If we don't give, we get stale. That's right. Stale it's like Bob was saying. In the, in the, yeah. This is a dead sea. That's right. We get stale. And lifeless. Yeah. Ultimately lifeless, like the dead sea. Yeah. Anybody else pulling something out of here? that has value to you, or that might be value to us and that you need to share it with us. You're feeling to spring up speedily, so maybe our yes. feelings can come faster. Yes, yes. So fasting is, and, and I think medically, I'm not a doctor, of course, but medically I think often it's, there is something about fasting that literally does help us yeah. and, and helps, helps our bodies. Yes, no question about that. So that's, that's a reason for fasting. I know, years ago, a um, long time ago, I was in high school, I still remember this very clearly. Um, my mother uh, ended up uh, having some, uh, and she wasn't a, what you'd call a spiritual woman, but she uh, was having an autoimmune thing with, with, uh, with arthritis that just really hit, like, jumped on her. Back then, I didn't have a clue. I might have, now I might have treated it differently and handled it differently, but. So I, I just watched my mom. She went on a juice fast. And I don't, I don't know how long she did it. She did it a number of days, and it cleared that whole thing up in her life. Just cleared it up. She never had that problem again. Now, later in her life, I mean another 40 years later, um, she you know, went, on to, went on to heaven with uh, an autoimmune thing that sprung up in her body overnight. But um, at any rate, I, I watched that in my mom. She fasted. Funny thing is, when I started fasting then a few years later in, in college, she thought I was going to die because I was fasting. No, that's just, just the way we are. I guess yeah. the way moms are, too. So it does, it does have a, a health benefit in your body. And your grandma used to go on juice fast, so okay. I still have her juicer. You still have her juicer. Let me guess, a Jack LaLanne juicer? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a great juicer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Anybody have an experience about that in, in fasting? God the glory. This morning I could lie on my left side. Normally I could only lie wow. on my right or on my back. But unless I were I had a rib that hurt, I could lie on it. Praise wow. God. Praise the Lord. And then while I'm giving God glory, sure. last Sunday we just all prayed. There were so many who needed prayer, we all prayed in our seat. Or was that two Sundays? Yeah, ago? I think it was last and Sunday. I had had this being like a bump that felt like I had liquid in it on the back of my head and hallelujah. And wow, praise away. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There's, there's a whole dynamic of power we need to tap into. And I, uh, so often I think we just so are, are ruled by what we feel and what we see and what we hear um, in the natural that we often never can really tap in to that, that power. Anybody else seeing something in here? There's, I mean, there's, we, yeah. Fast, it's that it feels more intimate, <clears throat> you, and you're waiting to hear um, beyond your daily devotions. Yeah. And uh, just for a deeper 
understanding or whatever you're crying out for. And I love that when you do that, he says, when you cry out for help, he will say, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. How many of us need to hear the Lord's voice right now in our lives? Here I am. I know I need that. Uh, I need a fresh encounter in my life. Um, I, I really do. I love what he says here. He says, your light will break forth mm, in the morning. So who, who doesn't want a, a clearer path? The scripture says the light shines brighter and brighter into the more perfect day. But we know that. But there's something where we, as we, as we begin to focus on the things of the kingdom, our light, the light of God is going to shine on, on our path. And that's, we need that at this hour. We really need it as never before. It's, been, uh, it's already been said that healing will spring up speedily. How about this? Your righteousness will go before you. Hey, I'm going to kind of hit this over and over. Does that mean that your, the fasting makes you righteous? No. 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 It has nothing to do with that. But that righteousness, which is a gift, which is a robe that the Lord puts on us, uh, will, will go before us. Yes, sir. Well, it seems in the first two verses it sets its precedence that other things are right in our lives as well. Okay. Yes. They yeah. um, did not forsake the ordinance of their God. Okay. So it seems that things were in place and they can't. Yeah. You know, I want to fast for a breakthrough, but if there's all this other stuff going on and sin and everything, what? Right. Um, maybe some order or some other things to come into order. Exactly. I'm not saying they shouldn't fast, but I think it's. Right. What well, could could it could it be that the very act of fasting, if it's done in the right situation, right context, right focus, will actually start to help bring those things into order. I think so. I think so. And so that is so very important. Let's, let's just, I want to encourage you this week um, to, to, of course, I'm going to encourage the church, but f find and ask the Lord, Lord, how would you have me fast this week? If it's till noon, awesome. Uh, Sundays, that's a practice that I have typically, not all the time, but typically. But if it's a celebration Sunday, of course, I, maybe I won't do that. But, um, but I typically fast until noon on Sundays. It's just that's something I typically do. Um, with some other times, and I won't talk about all those, but there's other times I fast as well. But that's, that Sunday mornings, I typically fast until at least noon or until somebody bribes me with a donut. <laughs> you know, I typically try and go till at least noon until I'm done with the service on Sunday morning. But let's just ask the Lord this month. And I'd like to take a couple minutes before we close and just, let's just pray for one another. Let's just, let's just pray that this area of discipline, I know for some people, now, if, if you have a, a physical issue and a blood sugar and all that kind of stuff, uh, you may need to talk to a doctor about fasting. Um, you know, but uh, I, I think as well, I, I want to encourage you in this regard. And if, you, if you've had a hard time fasting, in your life, I want to encourage you in this regard. You can train your body so that when when you're fasting, you don't miss the food. Now, there'll still be those moments that you're, you're you you know you feel it, or, or you need to listen to your body in this regard. Now, I know as faith people we say you don't listen to your body and you don't listen to your feelings. Well, there's a time to listen to your body. There's a t and I said, whoa, I said, I, there's a little low blood sugar happening here. I mean, you need to be aware of what, all that stuff, but we're not ultimately ruled by it. But what I'm saying is, if you uh, 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 have had those kind of issues in life, as you begin to discipline your body to fasting, your body will get into that rhythm, and it'll be, an e it'll be easier. It will get easier. Now, here's the thing. Oh, yeah, it's getting easier. I'm seeing that now, you know. And then one day will come along and you'll just get side clocked and you just go, man, it was just a terrible time of fasting. You see what I'm saying? So uh, I'm, I'm trying to help you. And I, I think I said it last week. There, there is a place in fasting where Kathy was sharing it here. This just, just even in a day fast, it sounded like, you know, she just had such a delightful experience and a breakthrough personally, spiritually in a day. But it'll also happen in a longer fast if you ever do that. 
my first my first fast, my first experience with fasting was very simple. Um, I was in college. We we were uh, had a great group of friends around me, and this other brother and I decided we'd fast, so we fasted for three days, and. Um, I'll never forget that because I had somebody to help me. You know, we were to, in it together. And then I, I remember one of the sisters said, oh, I'll make you breakfast. Well, we, I was as dumb as a whatever. She made all this sausage and eggs. And I mean, she made all this stuff. I had no clue. And then so you, after three days, you're ready to eat. And you started eating. Oh, is it not good? So, you know, those <laughs> there's those kinds of things, experiences. But... Um, and, and even longer fasts, here, let me tell you, a longer fast, if you decide to go on a longer fast, uh, it, it, it's going to take you a longer time to acclimate back into eating. And don't you dare then just jump back in and say, okay, well, now I can, no, you can't go back. If, you, if you're fasted for a week, you can't pick up where you left off. You can't do that. And so, there's just, let's just pray. A couple of you pray for the rest of us, and, um, and we'll, we'll leave on that this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for your word. And we thank you for uh, what we learned today. Lord God, that there are so many benefits to fasting, and mostly just to have intimacy with you, mm -hmm. for breakthroughs, for the light yes. to shine, yes. for to hear from you uh, more than, than we ever have before, yes, to Lord. seek you for. Uh, the new things that we need in our life for the year. And, um, Father, that bondages are broken, healings take place, um, and all of this because you uh, have given us your word to show us uh, how to, to do more. And mm -hmm. Father, I just ask that um, as we go through this class and, and we pray to you for fasting, uh, what, what that should look like for each one of us, that deliverance and breakthroughs and healings and all of those things that you promise in your word um, will be the, our testimonies yes. Father God and mostly that we would just um, get direction from you for this year and we just thank you thank you Lord so Father we thank you to um, speak to each of us about how you would have us fast this coming week and we thank you, Lord, for the answers to prayer that are forthcoming. And, Father, the transformation in our own hearts that, are, that is forthcoming. And we say thank you for all of this. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Now, so this week you're going to do some fasting as the Lord leads you. And then um, we're going to start thinking next week. I think we're going to talk about silence. And so you might have some opportunities this week to figure out how you can be silent and practice that discipline. And then next week we'll talk about, you know, fast, your experience with fasting, but then we'll go into silence. Amen. Oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Let's go worship the Lord today. I was so thinking about the answer last week as you had played the video, and that seemed very well me, maybe how we're laying down salt. Yes, amen. that's true. We're laying we down salt. Keeps us salty. It is one of those things. Yes. We'll regain some of our saltiness. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Can I just say something really quick? I don't want to embarrass you, Pastor Mark, but um, I love that Go ahead. I embarrass yes. myself all the time. Um, I love your humble spirit. There's a lot of pastors that would not have put somebody else's preaching up on the, on the TV. Well, thank the you. Video. Yes, thank so, you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go worship the Lord.